Neutron stars are born in supernovas. Neutron stars are very strange. We got neutron stars, magnetars, glitches, gravistars, pop stars, and new stars in this episode of Thor News. So come on, let's science it up, bitches. The question remains, which came first, the pulsar egg or the magnetar chicken? This is my hardcore science. I warned you, this is some super hardcore science. Let me break your mind. Neutron stars are very strange. Very strange indeed. But would you believe they just got stranger? Don't get shit twisted. The Force. It's calling to you. Just let it in. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Welcome to Asteroid Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. Today we have... Alright, I came over to NASA's Jack Parsons Jet Propulsion Lab. The case of the missing link, Neutron Star. Because I love neutron stars, baby. They're heavy shit, man. The mere teaspoon of a neutron star's solid crust weighs more than a billion tons. Like if Superman was ever going to build an armor, he would do it out of neutron star silicate. Okay. Let's go forth into this heavy science. The case of the missing link, Neutron Star. A mysterious Neutron Star has been caught behaving like two distinct objects, a radio pulsar and a magnetar. Maybe it's a gravitar. Oh. And could be important to understanding the evolution of these objects. Read more. I think I shall. We're talking about the case of the missing link, Neutron Star. This is an illustration. Like anthropologists piecing together the human family tree. Astronomers have found that a misfit skeleton of a star may link two different kinds of stellar remains. The mystery object, the mysterious object, called Pleasant Sucking Radishes, J1119-6127, has been caught behaving like two distinct objects, dash dash, a radio pulsar, and a magnetar, dash dash, and could be important to understanding their evolution. You see, Johnny, a radio pulsar is a type of neutron star. Hey, that rhymes. The extremely dense remnant of an exploded star that emits radio waves in predictable pulses due to its fast rotation. The other type are hard to predict because you never know what slow things are going to do. <laughs> That's so dumb, it made me laugh. Congratulations to me. Magnetars, by contrast, are rabble rousers. Hey, like me. They have violent high energy outbursts of X ray and gamma ray light. Well, I'm not violent. Yeah. I've been violent before. But that was only when people were punching me. And I punched them back. Though I do break inanimate objects sometimes. And their magnetic fields are the strongest known in the universe. This neutron star wears two different hats, said Walid Majid. Sometimes I think when people go to the Jet Propulsion Lab, they came in with one name and then they give them some silly name. That that doesn't apply to you, Walid Majid. <laughs> you know, I just, just having to pop it in my head. Okay, forget it. Yeah, that dude is an astrophysicist. I'm assuming it's a dude. At NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Sometimes it's a pulsar. Sometimes it's a magnetar. Sometimes it's a pop star. This object may tell us something about the underlying mechanisms of pulsars in general. Since the 1970s, scientists have treated pulsars and magnetars as two distinct populations of objects. But in the last decade, evidence has emerged that these could be stages in the evolution of a single object. No way. Majid's new study, combined with other observations of the object, suggest that J1119 could be in a never-before-seen transition state between radio pulsar and magnetar. The study was published in the January 1st issue of Astrophysical Journal Letters and was presented this week at the American Astronomical Society meeting in Grapevine, Texas. You know, I, I talked about crashing that thing. I really did. I was going to drive from Houston to Dallas and crash that thing. But then I, I definitely want to crash the, like, astronomer dance the last night they had. They have a dance and a party. I would love to crash that and just Kevin Bacon it. Get footloose and crazy, but I don't know that. We'd probably get stabbed by like 12 dark matter daggers. It wouldn't hurt because like dark matter is not really real. Asterisk. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's real. You just can't see it, smell it, touch it, detect it. No matter how many trillions or billions we spend on dark matter detectors. This is the final missing link in the chain that connects pulsars and magnetars, said Victoria Caspi, 
She's an astrophysicist from McGillicuddy University in Montreal, Canada. It seems like there's a smooth transition between these two kinds of neutron star behaviors. When this mysterious object was discovered in 2000, it appeared to be a radio pulsar. It was mostly quiet and predictable until July 2016. Dun dun dun. When NASA's Fermi and Swift Space Observatories observed two X-ray bursts and ten additional bursts of light at lower energies coming from the object. As reported in a study in the Astrophysical Journal letters by Air Syngogus. An additional 2016 study in the same journal led by Robert Archibald also looked at the two X-ray bursts, incorporating observations from NASA's new star, Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array Telescope. The study also suggested that the pulsar was behaving rebelliously, like a magnetar. When the outburst happened, Caspi excitedly emailed astrophysicist Tom Prince at JPL Caltech in Pasadena, telling him this would be a good object to study from the Southern Hemisphere, because it's coming up from the South. Oh my God, Nibiru isn't giant, it's tiny, but deadly. Prince, Majid, and colleagues used the NASA Deep Space Network 70-meter radio telescope in Canterbury, Australia, Canberra, the largest dish in the Southern Hemisphere, to see what was going on. What's going on? We think that these X-ray bursts happened because the object's enormous magnetic field got twisted. Don't get twisted, man, as the object was spinning, Majid said. Look, magnetar, neutron star, don't get shit fucked up, okay? The stress of a twisting magnetic field is so great that it causes the outer crust of the neutron star to break, analogous to tectonic plates on Earth causing earthquakes, or star quakes, or stellar quakes. This causes an abrupt change in rotation called a glitch. Oh God, yes! Neutron stars are so dense. This is where I'm talking about Superman armor. Neutron stars are so dense that one teaspoon weighs as much as a mountain. I guess that would make it really hard to have sex with the neutron star. The star's crust, roughly 0.6 miles, or one kilometer, thick, with higher pressure and density at greater depths, is a neutron-rich lattice. Lattice, lattice, lattice. Is that like stellar lingerie? Mm. You're charging my particles. This particular neutron star is thought to have one of the strongest magnetic fields among the population of known pulsars. A few trillion times stronger than the magnetic field of the sun. Wow. So how far away does it have to be from something to tug on it? Two weeks after the X-ray outburst, Mahid and colleagues tracked the object's emissions at radio frequencies, which are much lower in energy than X-rays. The radio emissions had sharp increases and decreases in intensity, allowing scientists quantify how the emission evolved. <sighs> how did this emission happen? Researchers used an instrument, which they informally call a pulsar machine. Uh-oh. It's like they took CERN and made a Frankenstein CERN, and they called it a pulsar machine. It was recently installed at the same <laughs> dork-sucking network dish in Australia. Within 10 days, something completely changed in the pulsar. It had started behaving like a normal radio pulsar again. Maybe it's like the observational physics thing that Objects act one way when observed, and they act another way when they're not observed. So you screwed it up, buddy. You observed it, and then it observed you observing it. And that's when the change happened. Some hardcore science. I warned you. This is some super hardcore science. It may break your mind. The question remains, which came first, the pulsar egg or the magnetar chicken? Some scientists argue that objects like J1119 begin as magnetars and gradually stop outbursting X-rays and gamma rays over time. But others propose the opposite theory, that the radio pulsar comes first and, over time, its magnetic field emerges from the supernova's rubble, and then the magnetar-like outbursts begin. But just as babies grow to be adults and not vice versa, Benjamin Button asterisk, there is likely a single path for these objects to take, whatever, to help solve this mystery, to help solve this mystery, much as anthropologists study the remains of human ancestors at different stages of evolutionary history. Astronomers want to find more missing link objects like J1119. If I put in one too many ones, forgive me. I guess that means I'm not the one. I'm not the new Neo. Asterisk. This particular object was likely, this particular object was likely formed following a supernova 1600 years ago. Whatever. You guys were doing good on updating stuff up until now. Monitoring similar objects may shed light on whether this phenomenon is specific to J1119 or whether this behavior is common in this class of objects. Astronomers continue to monitor J1119 as well. Mahid and colleagues observed in December a marked brightening of emissions at radio wavelengths in a consistent pattern with other magnetars. Our recent observations show that this object 
contains a bit more of the astrophysical DNA of two different families of neutron stars. Prince said, Prince said, we are looking forward to finding other examples of this type of transitional object. Me too, buddy. JPL, a division of Caltech, manages the deep space network for NASA. Sweet. All right, there you go. Hardcore science. We got a new kind of star, baby. Sweet. Don't get shit twisted. God bless everyone. Stay cool. A neutron star, the entire star, is smaller than the town you live in. Some of them spin around on their axis so fast, they can complete one revolution in less than a millisecond. Very strange indeed. But would you believe they just got stranger? The neutron star is spinning inside a supernova remnant, astronomers call Cassiopeia. Neutron stars are born in supernovas. 